This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by GoToMeeting, online meetings made easy. And you can get a free 30-day trial if you go to gotomeeting.com slash Turks. Now, I'm going to Jeppe Barber not as an indictment of Haley Barber. Jeppe is Haley Barber's uh, uh, older brother, and he was mayor of uh, this mythical great Yazoo City, uh, Mississippi, back in 1968. Uh, I'm not going there as uh, saying, hey, you know, he's associated. I'm doing this because I want you to get a sense of the frame of mind back then. Okay? Now, this is from a book from 1971. Uh, the author, uh, the book is called Yazoo, Integration in Deep Southern Town. The author is Willie Morris, and he went and talked to all these guys, and he's quoting Jeppe in the book. Okay? Now, this was, again, the mayor of this town in 1968. Now, I'm telling you this as partly like Haley Barber thinks that even earlier than that, in the early 1960s, that there was no problem with integration and black people and white people were getting along great in Yazoo City. Let's see if that's true. So here's uh, some of what Jeppe had to say. He said, look, South Main Street's drying up. And he was talking about some of the protests uh, that uh, African American residents were doing boycotting the local white owned businesses. He said it's drying up and he listed the stores that, is, uh, that had gone out of business including one drug store hit hardest because it specialized in chitlin sandwiches and two dollar pistols. He says, uh, he continues by saying the Negro leaders in charge are now quote completely irresponsible and that they're quote determined to destroy whites economically. And he says it's totally unreasonable and, uh, and that unfortunately they, they've got the support of the colored community, these leaders that are leading this boycott. Now that's, that's questionable to begin with. Trust me, it gets much worse. Then he goes on to describe how local whites were trying to get some industries uh, to come in to Yazoo City. He says, but look, these uh, uh, protests by, as he calls them, the coloreds, uh, are trying to wipe us out. He says, look, uh, they're not just trying to wipe us out, but they're trying to get us on our knees so they can tell us what to do. And he said, look, you know, he's the mayor, remember. He's like, before I was going to do sewage and, and uh, even do some uh, paving in the colored parts of town. He's like, but I can't get too enthusiastic about that now. Because the, the colored folks in 1968 in Mississippi were trying to get the white folks on their knees, right? So too bad they don't get sewage. You know, you're going to have to live in that filth because the white mayor has decided that. And he said, at, at a time might have come, he said, for the whites to retaliate with firings and other measures. Gee, I wonder what that could be. All right, it gets much worse. So he continues, and uh, Jeppe apparently bemoaned to, to the author Morris that there were tougher uh, things to deal with. He said, look, and here's quotes, maybe five years ago, he said, you could have appointed a colored man yourself. Now you simply can't get away with it. They're going to have to pick their own leaders. You could have gotten on the radio five years ago using these very words, George Collins is this nigger we've appointed, and you could have gotten away with it. I guess they're just going th going through a state of being rebellious and hard-nosed and not listening to white people like they used to. Now, he's talking about five, that's 68, he's talking about five years ago, that's 1963. Haley Barber saying he went to the Martin Luther King speech in 1962 and that everything was hunky-dory with white people and black people. Meanwhile, here's his brother saying, oh, I remember the good old days, the days that Haley Barber's talking about, when we just, and I'm quoting him here, where we just pick any nigger we liked and said, that's our boy and you're going to vote for him. Now they're being hard-nosed about it and they want to pick their own people. They're trying to get us on their knees. He's not done with the N-word yet. The book continues um, uh, talking about the police in Yazoo City and Jeppe says, you get a drunk, you either get him to come, with, come in with you or you have to manhandle him. You give him mace, and he'll want to go anywhere with you. It keeps that nigger's head in good shape. But Yazoo City, Mississippi was in great shape. They had integrated. Everything was hunky-dory. Haley Barber was having a good time. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. What are you guys talking about? I mean, as long as you kept their heads in good shape by manhandling them and macing them, and they didn't rise up, and you picked whoever you wanted to be your then everything was fine. Haley Barber and Jeppy Barber were having a swell time. I mean, he goes on and on. He's got another quote where he says, 
uh, he had problems with the, quote, little niggers around town, referring to young black children. Look, I'm telling you, for the eighth time, that was back in the day, it was 1968, and the book came out in 71, etc., okay? But the reason I tell you this not, is not just about Haley Barber and how he was wrong and, as Keith Oberman would say, goddamn wrong about what was happening in Mississippi back then. And, and he had, at the best case scenario, an unbelievably callous interpretation of what was happening to other people in Mississippi. And that's a best case scenario, right? But I'm also telling you that because when, when you hear people say, oh, it wasn't that bad or whatever, remember these quotes, okay? No, no, it was that bad, and it was much worse. And this guy thinks he's one of the good guys because he's not out lynching people, okay? And that also happened. They killed a lot of people down in Mississippi for daring to, you know, pick their own leaders and, and raise their head and represent themselves and get a chance to vote, etc. okay? And then one last thing. Look, guys, a lot of those folks are, are still with us. This is, we're not talking about 1868, we're talking about 1968. And those people are some of the leaders in one particular party these days. I mean, it used to be both parties. There was a lot of really bad Democrats in the South. They got wiped off the board, right? Now, they're all in one party. And those guys, they didn't, like, this is something I struggle with. This is something I had to learn as I was coming up. Because it's hard to get out of your own perspective. Okay, my perspective was I was growing up in New Jersey and we actually, you know, we were past, way past the civil rights era and there was kids from all over the world, et cetera. I don't understand this mindset, right? But this is, this is the mindset that a lot of these folks grew up in, whether it was Haley Barber in Mississippi, whether it was Rush Limbaugh in Missouri, because I, and I'm not saying that out of nowhere, I read a book about it. Same exact things. He's like, oh, it wasn't that bad back then, it was great. We had a black maiden, we treated her pretty decent. Okay, that's the mindset they grew up in, the perspective they grew up in. So, I, I'm partly talking to myself here in, in the sense of I shouldn't be that surprised that they think like this. I'm surprised every time because it's not how I grew up, right? But I guess if you grew up in this context, you think, damn it, man, we had it so good. Now these black folks actually get to live in our democracy and have the same rights as us. I mean, and when you hear Pat Buchanan, and you hear so many guys on Fox News Channel talking about how whites have to reproduce more, they have to get back in charge. This is what they're talking about. And they weren't the good old days. For a lot of people in this country, those were the terrible days of our existence. And in these days, everybody's in different offices in different cities. The one way you can all get together is GoToMeeting.com. You're all online at the same time. Right, and it's super easy. All you need is a computer, internet connection, two minutes, boom, you're set up. You can share documents. A guy puts up a document in Miami, the other one sees it in San Francisco. You can, in fact, amend it. You can do sales presentations, very convenient. And the best part of all this is that you get a free 30-day trial by going to GoToMeeting.com slash Turks. Go.